Yeah. I've had yeah, my fiber yeah. for about a month now and I've only used it a few times. I went directly to using Lightburn. Would I benefit from loading up EasyCat as well or just stick with Lightburn? Uh, if you haven't done them, do your lens corrections, which you can't do in Lightburn, uh, unless you did it the Lightburn way, the way they show it, manual corrections, which sucks. Uh, you know, I, I think Core Files better. Um, virtually every way uh, so if you haven't done that at least do that don't throw out your easy cat installation too uh, this isn't gonna be a long answer but um, people usually just delete the easy cat folder once they get light burn working even the tiniest little bit keep it Oh my god, we're here. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Laser Source Podcast. One more podcast if you have questions. That was a nice face, Matt. You got frozen there for a second. I liked it. Oh, it's because we broke Kyle. I'm looking at chat. If you're new here, we always start uh, a few minutes late, very casually. uh, A few minutes late. So, uh, we're actually right on time today, which is good. I'm impressed. And, um... Uh, I'm glad that you guys are here. Uh, we don't really have a topic this week, so we're here to just kind of talk to you guys, hang out, and see what's good. There they are. Jack in the shop says it's so fun. It's so funny. Like I feel like we're I feel like we're exceptionally on time today. Compared well, to- here's what, here's the thing. Like there's a pattern that's evolved over the past like I don't know since it started. <laughs> if like if it yeah. something happened where it started at nine o'clock. Something's wrong. Something's wrong, right? Yeah. Something's wrong. <laughs> Something's wrong. Oh, hey, Today we have Kyle on the show. It's a guest Kyle. of ours. Ah. He's a YouTuber, I think. Welcome we here, Kyle. Do I have Do I have Mike again? You do. All right. Very nice. By the way, you're going to be hearing my compressor kick on and stuff because I've got jobs burning. Got to make money. Before we get going, can I just say how wrong this is? <laughs> Kyle is here to monitor, monitor Matt. Matt. That is the absolute reverse, if anything, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, oh my I'd like God. to remind everybody that I specifically chose to send the soundboard to Kyle because I didn't trust Matt with that kind of power. <laughs> <laughs> we would have already had like four fart sounds already if Matt, had, ins- that, if Matt had that <laughs> soundboard in front of him. So Instead, now we get Allie's going <laughs> he does the sounds himself after paying for the board. That's right. Um, <laughs> so many people here in chat today. I just want to say hi to some people that I've been seeing okay. lately because, again, we're doing a Q&A today. I don't usually get to do this when we have guests and stuff, uh, so I just want to acknowledge some people because we, you know, we're usually like, okay, this is the person. Let's get into question. We don't have to do that right now. So, uh, Vince Nobuck has been popping by a lot lately. Have you guys been seeing Vince, hey, Vince Nobuck? Yes. That's like a name that's been popping up over and over again. Scoot's Random Journey. That's a new one, uh, which is pretty dope. And uh, we've got Dalton Connolly. Those are the those were the early guys. Those guys were here like way early. Laura's here. What's up, Laura? Glenn Chua. Well, you guys are like, you guys are really going at it. Randy H. Usually it's like a nice list for me, but these guys are like having a, a big, they're like they're having going. a big throwdown. Jacket in the shop, as always, is here. Eric Sawyer, what's up? Sargon Tavor, back again. That's another regular. We've been having Sargon by very, very often. Wayne Brooks. Uh, Gretsch Zeppelin, that's another one we've been seeing over and that's over again. Cool a, lot of you guys are, a lot of you guys are becoming like regulars, which is pretty cool. Keith Bordley. And uh, did I say Wayne Brooks? Wayne Brooks, Giovanni Oritz, Creations by Adam, Blonde Fox Creations, back again. Uh, Of course, my wife is here to babysit all three of us, and that's the truth. Accuracy. That's the truth, truth. Absolutely. Tina Kassar and uh, E.T. Laserworks. What's up, Michael? Michael. Scott. Hey, Michael. And I think, man, you guys are just like, this is nuts. Um... I think that's that's everybody I've seen in chat so far. Todd Fata just came in. Fata. Uh, I don't know. I, I hate saying names. Anyway, uh, Q&A, guys. If you have a question, throw, <laughs> throw them in chat, and uh, we will get to them in usually more or less the order they were received as fast as possible. In the meantime, Ka- Kyle, can you 
actually, can you grab the cake, bro? Because I feel like most people have not seen the cake. I'd love to show that off right now, uh, since we have an audience. Icon Laser, what's up, man? The cake yo, is yo. a lie. The cake is not a lie. Go get it. It's right there. It's literally, it's re- literally there in front of us. Look at that thing, dude. That's sick. That's pretty sick. And we got the candle still on top. How did you affix the candle to the top of the cake, dude? Uh, by melting wax. You just melted it straight on. Nice. Yeah. 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 With fire. <laughs> what a great there's, answer. Uh, there's some strawberries on there, you know, because what's a cake without some, some garnishes, right? Yeah, right? of course. Of course, dude. It's beautiful. I didn't have an opportunity to... Uh, I didn't mask it, and because my air assist is crap, uh, there's there's some some burnout a little it's bit, toast. you know, the it's stuff. But, yeah, it's But, toast. you know... But it's a yeah. cake. It looks like yeah. a cake. It's not like I'm confused. Maybe it's a marshmallow it. topping yeah. with a little bit of burnness for flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. That's kind of like a, a creme brulee. Like a boring. golden, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very nice. <laughs> and it's modular, so you could just yeah. swap out the name. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of the... Uh, I think original goals with that, right? You were going to do, we were talking about like looking at like the living hinge. You yeah. Know, so it'd actually be that was round. The goal. It'd actually be that around the cake. Goal. But that material wasn't it, huh? That wasn't like, it just wasn't. No. no. So most of what I have in the shop is hardboard and quarter inch ply, which is what this is. Mm-hmm. Um, the hardboard is what I do the jigs out of. Right. So between the two, they're both rather rigid. Like eighth inch ply would probably be way better or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, and also the plywood I have is particularly dry. So if the moisture content was higher, it would be a little more pliable. Right. Um, and that would help. Yeah. But um, yeah. instead it would just crumble apart when I Hard- started. Hardwood. Dude, that's a, uh, that's a Ukuch thing, man. Pick up some of that eighth yeah. inch hardwood from Ukuch. <clears throat> that probably yes. cut, that probably I was literally really gonna nice ask to that. Like, yep. When you pulled that out, I was gonna say, is that something from Ukuch or no? Because I thought Alex well, might have sent you some I mean the well, the actually, all the yeah. whether you're using whether you're using ply or particle board or whatever, like all those little pieces when you're cutting such fine cuts into them over and over and over so close together in order to get the hinge. I mean, those those pieces are just gonna like kind of fall apart. The adhesive isn't gonna hold that together. So hardwood's really the way yeah. to go. I actually yeah. completely forgot that I still have a box of ukuch that I haven't unboxed yet. You do, yeah. You I do. I wish I wish I remembered that. Damn it, Matt! Where were you like three days ago? Where is it? Do you have it? It's down there. Maybe we'll I look could, at. I maybe could. we'll look at it today. Yeah, you know, I kind of you know, just like unbox it in the background and yeah, show the cool pieces you pull while you're pulling. Um, yeah. If you if you if you guys missed it, like I don't know, like eight episodes ago, I don't know. That's a random guess. We got a huge box of hardwoods in from Ukuch, and I unboxed it live on the podcast. And uh, as soon as it was over, Kyle was immensely jealous, so I got him a box of Ukuch too. So um, yeah, let's pull that. Let's pull that. Maybe we'll take a look at that while we're hanging out um, and okay. see if there's anything sick in there tucked away blonde fox serious question can you cut a pizza with a laser uh maybe matt i think maybe matt could cut a pizza with a laser i don't think kyle and i can get away with it with i think you're gonna need some wicked air assist and a co2 gantry yeah but i mean and kyle and i have a co2 gantry laser i have a couple but i think matt's boss isn't matt's boss like 150 watts he just walks it's 150 around. watts, yeah. and he's got like the tubing in it that can support like 100 psi. Of yeah, air I, assist. I feel like you really need I really agree. like a lot of power to like cut through a pizza. I mean, remember the bagel cutting Friday light? Oh, we 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 threw everything <laughs> we had at that stupid bagel, and we got maybe like two inches into it after a couple passes. So I think yeah. I think Matt would probably be able to get through it in one shot if he. It tried. would be really <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it'd be really interesting, especially because the carbs, just the fire, like they don't actually like push through. It would just be like right. Yeah, but I think I'd probably it'd be like once you're setting for pizza, uh, it's about 100 watts, 70 psi. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah look, Miranda, as it goes. 
we've cut bagels and Oreos. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's the cheese and the sauce I'm worried about. You have to boil that sauce away to like burn yeah, the. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the cheese yeah. itself has to like. That's a good question. Yeah, I might. That I might, might do it. A, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, are t- wait, wait, are we talking like deep dish though? Or are we talking like thin crust? Because that's going to be two separate I settings. I mean, come on. It's <laughs> like I'm talking about like New York pizza, not like okay, you know, like Chicago, Chicago deep Chicago dish. Pizza. It's yeah. just literally just explodes in the laser. Miss me with that, dude. You'd need like one of those big flatbed, like you know, like 300 watt tube assemblies <laughs> where the tube is the gantry. All right, you know? guys, we're here at Light Object, and we're in the big room. <laughs> By the way, there was a question way up high, too. I've got one oh, after this. There? Okay, yeah, but sure. let's answer if this you, one, and then we'll yeah, go back. Yeah, you have it. Um, so, yep. Scoot's asking, is there a video on the rotary split size mm. and overlap settings yet? Uh, yeah, I would check out the original rotary setup video. Um, it's done in EasyCAD, so it's different than Lightburn, but the same, because it's still the same parameters being passed to the EasyCAD board. So, the labels might be a tiny bit different, but they, they all do the same thing and the menus are different and where you find the settings are different, but it's the same. And you can watch that tutorial and learn what those things do. Split size is how much of a space is going to be engraved on a cylinder before you rotate the cylinder and engrave more. Uh, the, the smaller the split size, the more accurate your rotary is going to be when turning. And the better fidelity you're going to get out of your engraving because you're not pushing that focus, but it also takes longer. So if you want to go faster, you need a larger split size because then the Galvo will engrave like a big stretch and rotate and it's less rotations. So it doesn't take as long. Um, typically I go very small on split size when I do rotary. I, I'm, I like to keep my split size at or some low multiple of the line distance. So if my line distance is like 0.2, or 0.25, uh, then I would set my split size to 0.2 or 0.25, uh, or uh, excuse me, 0.02 or 0.025, uh, or 0.04 or 0.05, you know, like some small multiple of that line distance. So I'm engraving one or two lines per, per rotation. And yeah, it takes longer, but uh, in my experience, the results are much better. You don't have weird gaps between the splits. Um, yeah. and, and things like that. So that's typically how I, I handle that overlap. And again, we talk about this in the video and I recommend you watch it anyway. Overlap is if you are having your splits not line up. So let's say you're doing large split size because you're impatient and you don't want to wait for the high fidelity with the low split size. You set a high split size so that the job goes faster, but you notice gaps between your splits. So it'll mark that section, rotate, and then mark the next one. And between those two, there is a gap. That is where your overlap setting would come in. So you would actually raise that value to bring those closer together. Uh, it does have a different name in EasyCAD, but again, it does the same thing. So that's kind of a general overview of what those parameters do, but um, we definitely get much more into it in that EasyCAD style rotary setup video, which again applies to Lightburn as well. So I, w- I would check that out. Do you have anything to add to that? that I think that covers it. I mean, yeah, I was okay. going to say too, the one thing I can tell you too is like, especially with rotary settings, every rotary is going to be a little bit different. I've found just because yeah. like, I know with some people, their machine might be the, the way the machine talks to the rotary. Um, mm-hmm. Cause I know some people do uh, cups at point one which is wild. Yeah. That, that has to be the fastest freaking cups ever. Mine's yeah. at 0.65. I've tried going to 0.08 or uh, 0.065. I've tried going to like 0.08 and I, I start seeing little lines enough to where I'm not happy with it. So yeah. like, that's it. So that's just something too to consider and play with for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right on. Uh, and you said you had a question you saw earlier in chat. Yeah, so Kowalski does, um, had said in your Galvo video, you have the powder coating setting for rotary at one parameter. And then in the library settings, uh, from the LMA, uh, they're different. So I guess he was just saying like thoughts I, on that or why they yeah, might be different. So I would take, I would probably take the video settings with a grain of salt and lean more on the parameter settings. I think they 
were probably a little more refined by the time Kyle and I finished adding them to the library. So I would start there. If it's not working super great, maybe review the video and see maybe what is different between the two. Uh, if there, if there are differences, they should be small. Um, also, I'm curious about which powder coat video you're watching because the settings have also evolved over time. The, uh, um, project mark video is much older than the Lightburn for Galvo crash course cylinder correction video. Right. And we use those settings in both of them. And I know for a fact that they're different. I don't think the ones from the Lightburn, uh, for Galvo crash course ever actually even made it into the parameter library. And again, those are for my laser with my wattage and my lens. So it, it's a little, you know what I mean? Like, so they're, they're, ev take everything with a grain of salt. Nothing is written in stone. Uh, all of those parameters, we assume that all three of us assume you are going to have to tweak for your laser. They're, they're not out of the box ready because everybody's laser is different. Even two lasers. And Kyle and I have literally tested this with the same exact source, with the same exact lens, running the same exact material. Like, it, the settings are still different. Sometimes a deviation it's a, it's of, like, a ballpark, five to ten percent. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's... So everything is different. And I, we've talked about this, too, a little bit, mostly when it comes to MOPA and, like, doing colors. But it kind of applies to everything. Like, your environment matters. You know, Matt, with his... 100% humidity freaking Florida days is going to experience a, a vastly different setting for, you know, like things like leather is a great example than I'm going to have here where it's literally 10% humidity and 20 degrees, you know, so the, yeah. things like that matter. They affect your material. They affect uh, the way light travels through the air. Uh, there's all different kinds of stuff going on here, guys. So that you're always going to kind of play with them. Miranda said what I was thinking too. Some brands and colors of tumblers need different settings. The thickness of the coating, uh, an Arctic versus a Yeti Dude. versus a Polar Camel. Um, especially Yeti uh, is known for uh, double coating sometimes, right? Or was well, it Yeti or it, it, Arctic? It, well, all of them do it. That's the thing. Yeah, they for all sure. do it. So, and, uh, you know, usually you're doing, especially with tumblers, this is a great point, man, especially with tumblers. Uh, you know, you, you always hear about people doing them on the CO2. And you just kind of blast them and, and you take them off and you're done. done. And if you're doing that with a fiber laser, um, you, you really, that's not the case. Uh, even on the CO2, like different colors are going to require a different amount of power because those colors of powder coat are reflecting different amounts frequency of to light. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so like a red, right, which is very close to infrared is going Fucking to reflect a, so much more of that infrared laser light than something light. like a black, right? Um, so that's just something that you're going to want to keep in mind. Uh, definitely, I I do have different settings for different tumblers uh, that I've been, you know, experimenting with with the uh, with the fiber. So yeah, that's a really good point, Matt. Really good point. There you um, go. I didn't have anything else queued up yet. Uh, Kyle, what's going on? I have box. You have box. Okay, sweet. What's in I it? Have box. I sliced the tape, and that's that's as far as I got. <laughs> Here's a question. For There's you wood. Real quick while There's you wood in the box. box. <laughs> Why does EasyCAD three suck so bad? <laughs> yes. EasyCAD three. Look at that. That's a big one. I didn't get one that big. Um, I love your wood. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's hard to get your hands around it, isn't it? Hard thick. What is that? Like a quarter inch, half inch? I love um, that walnut. That it's pretty. Uh, I was kind of thinking it might be walnut. Actually, that's a, that's a chonky boy, dude. That's look at that thing. It's like five eighths. Nice. Um, in all seriousness, EasyCAD doesn't suck that much. Um, and EasyCAD three sucks a hell of a lot less than EasyCAD two. Uh, I, I was watching something the other day. It was the... I was looking for an answer for someone. I was watching the Everything You Need to Know About Galvo Lasers video. Looking for an answer to write. I think you were there, Matt. We, on Facebook, we were talking... I uh, sent that to Mindy soon yeah, before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, in that video, we kind of go into it. EasyCAD isn't that bad. It's actually pretty easy to use. 
Uh, the menus make a lot of sense. Uh, the way that it's set up is pretty simple compared to other industry standard softwares for other industries. Like, we have it good in the laser world. EasyCAD's pretty straightforward. The problem with EasyCAD 2 is that it's got stability issues. It crashes all the time. It's not updated anymore. There's no bug fixes. Uh, and it's it just it's not very reliable when it's running. So you can have crashes in the middle of jobs and stuff. EasyCAD 3 resolves a lot of those issues. What it doesn't resolve is the user friendliness of it. Uh, EasyCAD was developed for factories. EasyCAD was developed for manufacturing. So, um, you know, that's not us, right? Like these people are setting up these machines one time and then they're running like 500 million parts and then throwing the laser away and getting a new one. Like it's, it's not designed for the way that we're using it. We're kind of taking advantage of that software to do like kind of our, our more kind of low key stuff, I guess, relative to, you know, what manufacturers would be doing with it. So, um, yes. long story short, uh, it doesn't suck so bad. It's just not really made for us. Whereas something like Lightburn is, uh, if you want, you can always downgrade from EasyCAD uh, 3 to EasyCAD 2. We have a guide on that that takes you step by step through doing it so that you can use Lightburn. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, you just do a search on YouTube. We're the only people that have done it. I think it's called the EasyCAD 3 downgrade guide. Uh, so check that out. A little maple there, Kyle. A little maple you got going on? Yep. Three pieces of this, nice and thin. Sweet. And then, uh, dude, I'm seeing some, some wood. It looks like it would have been perfect for, uh, I know. I'm seeing some birthday cake wood in there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's looking like maybe a mulligan. A, a do it better moment. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, Pablo, what's up? Um, I am behind on chat. Pablo says, new to the community, operator of a 30,000 watt CO2 in an aerospace. So the sun. The sun. What the (laughs) hell? And still can't, a 30 kilowatt CO2, basically. And I still can't figure out the best cutting and engraving conditions for a 20 watt diode. Looking for good material libraries out there. Um, I mean, I have some like tests. Settings. Um, Di- diode is difficult well, because I do. <laughs> so, so here, here's the thing. Yeah. Diode is very difficult because you're varying dot sizes from module to module, and if you're off by focus, you're varying it even more. The dot size for my five watt module could be twenty percent bigger than Alex's dot size of his five watt module, mm-hmm. and now there's a discrepancy between the two. So my settings might blow a hole through something, whereas it, it may give a perfect engrave on his. Yeah. So it's very difficult to, to really share a library for that. Um, the best thing, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to share any of my, my test libraries for that too, but you really want to run a test grid on whatever material you're going to be running on. Yeah. You can get into the ballpark but a test grid is ultimately what's going to dictate what your module is, is is geared toward, either higher or lower than the average. Yeah, and it, it's like the same concept as taking a, a two hundred millimeter lens versus a seventy millimeter lens on a fiber. You could blow a hole through a piece of two millimeter steel real quick on a seventy millimeter, whereas it could take you forever on like a three hundred millimeter lens. So. Um, yeah. And realistically, the dot sizes between the two aren't that vastly different. They're different, yeah, um, but they're not that different. That's all really good. And I, you know, I I think that a lot of people, too, think that, like, test grids are just for marking. But you can do a test <coughs> grid for cutting, too. Like, one of the first things I did when I got the old black and red ohm tech when we were first starting Monroe Laser was I did like a bunch, I did test grids, manual test grids. We didn't have them built into Lightburn yet. I did manual test grids uh, on the top half of these little cards that I cut from my material. They were like four inches by two inches. And then the bottom half of that four inch by two inch card were cut test grids. So I'd see what the fastest speed and lowest power was that I could use to cut through the material without leaving a mark. And I did that all the way across the cards. Uh, so you can do test grids for cut 
cut settings too. Uh, that's the other just thing, for marketing. The other thing I've noticed when I've got a, I've got a few friends like after they see me with the lasers and working with stuff, I have a couple of buddies who have gotten um, diodes, and one of the things I've noticed is that the the not understanding the DPI, right? Like, mm-hmm. so literally, if you're looking for a darker burn, um, the closer the line size, like getting that distance tightened up, really will give you like a huge difference. Um, like, well, I mean, here's one. I don't know if my thing will go this far. Hold on a second. Okay. Um, yeah, DPI, man. You gotta, you gotta understand some stuff about that for sure. And so this is what I was working on. Like I'm always working on. Um, so this is the, um, mm. olive wood. I know and I love those. no matter what angle you look at it, I mean, it's a nice dark burn. Yeah. Um, but it's so slow. That's why I got the CO2 Galvo and I'm working. I've got the settings for the 100 lens down pretty tight. Like Kyle and I were playing with it the other night. Um, <clears throat> and it's pretty spot on, but I need to go up to the 200 lens so I can actually have that, uh, the, the, work the distance. Area. Yeah. The work area I need. So that's my next thing to play with. Um, mm-hmm. but having that 0.05, it's 0.05 is my line distance. So it's so slow going on the gantry, but it's, it's what it needs to be for it to look as good as it doesn't stay looking that nice. Um, cause a lot of people will get the char they want, but then you'll notice, especially with a diode, you run your fingers over it and it's just ash. And now what? Right. Um, so that's something to consider too. Just to, yeah. and to expand on this in a technical way for people, because it's a Q and a learning day, um, every material. And we talk about this in any of our photo episodes, uh, specifically the, the photo engraving guide. If you haven't watched that, Please go watch it. But it applies to vectors, too. Every material has a line distance where the lines are going to be one on top of another in a nice, clean, stacked row without overlapping. Anything above that number or below that number, I guess, because we're increasing the the tightness, uh, anything below that number, those lines are going to begin to overlap. And it's not the same thing as running multiple passes. Because the laser just hit that spot. It's still yep. super hot. It hasn't had time to run through the rest of the part before coming back for a second pass and cool. So tightening that line distance, you're hitting the same spots over and over and over again in very, very, very quick succession. And it makes a really big difference. And how much yeah. those lines are overlapping, how tight that line distance is, or even if they're completely overlapped and you're literally hitting every line twice before moving on to the next one, um, you know, that all of those things kind of make a difference. Understanding that is really important. And an easy way to understand that if you're still confused is to go watch the photo and grieving guide where we talk about yeah. it. Just know when you watch that episode, it doesn't just apply to photos and raster images. The same stuff applies to vectors too, because you're still filling a vector at the end of the day with lines, the laser is kind of converting that vector back to a raster because it's literally filling it with lines and making it a raster image. I'm using air quotes there if you're listening. Um, so go watch that episode again, little pinch of salt with that. Yeah. What's yeah. Up? And the other thing too, is this is also, this is where you start to learn your laser and the dot size. Like Kyle was talking about while he sniffs his wood over there on the side. Um, by the way, uh, I already typed this. If you've enjoyed watching Kyle play with his wood while we learn from Alex, uh, make sure you smash the like button. Um, mm. I don't know if we're allowed to say that, but anyways, um, the other thing too, is this is actually defocused about six millimeters probably mm-hmm. because, um, I have a really powerful cutting laser. So for me to get this nice shallow burn, um, I need, so there's still depth. You can still grab a fingernail on there. Um, but for me to get the shallow depth that I need for it to be a surface mark almost, uh, I have to defocus quite a bit. So yeah. that's another thing too. I don't know with diodes. I've never played with diodes enough to know, like, what do you guys, is does defocusing work with diodes? Can you I, defocus? Yeah. Is definitely. it worth it? I, it's, defocusing is always going to serve the same function, which is to increase the dot size, which spreads out your power from a very small area with very high energy density to a larger area with lower energy density. And that's always going to mean less ablation and more heat. So if you're going for heat, you want a a larger dot size. So using a larger lens 
on a fiber laser, which would give you a larger dot size, or defocusing on a CO2, or defocusing on a fiber, or defocusing on a diode. It doesn't really matter. You're always doing the same thing. You're making that dot size bigger because all lasers focus to a point through a focal lens. So um, it doesn't really matter what platform you're on or what the wavelength of your laser is. If you have a larger dot size, uh, you're spreading that power out over a lar larger area, which means less ablation, more heat. Yeah. All right. I got Find the next question. To uh, large point Sharpie. Yeah, Sharpie. That's exactly right. That's, that's what I was thinking. Analogy. Yep. Um, all right. So check it out. Here's the next one. This is from way up the tippy top. Two questions, actually. Okay. So Vince, no bucks. I can answer Look yours it. pretty quick. Uh, yeah, uh, I can, but I'm trying to stay on the one because Vince asked me oh, okay. a question. For sure. For sure. It's super easy. Uh, he asked, where were the glass ornaments from that I got mm. and did for like a month and a half on the show? Yeah. Uh, those I actually ordered with Alicia Pate and May uh, Armstrong, who we just had on the show. Um, but I'm one of the admin over at the laser lounge. Um, so basically the three of us kind of just went in on a bulk buy cause we were all making stuff. Uh, and we ordered them. I can't remember the, the supplier name. Um, but it's one of those things where we just ordered them off of uh, Alibaba. Uh, and what's the other one? H L gate or what's the, yeah. Yeah. Is it H L gate? Um, but either way we got them. Uh, I think they ended up being like landed to me. They were like, a uh, $2 or something like that. Um, but that's because we ordered quite a few. Um, I think I alone had 500 or mm -hmm. 600. Um, and so, cause I'm, I'm already prepping them and keeping them for next year. So I've got them here and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Uh, cause I'm, I'm thinking of doing the Christmas in July thing. Um, Vince, I'll have to look. I'll let you know, man, on the, hit me up on the LMA or hit me up on a uh, Discord and I'll let you know how thick they were. Uh, but for it's worth it. It's one of those things that if you think about it now, and order them now. I'm telling you the Christmas in July thing. Um, I'm planning on hitting up realtors soon uh, to say like, hey, you know, to just put their logo on it. And like, here you go. And at Christmas time, we're thinking of you. Uh, and as cheesy as it sounds, I would put it on my tree because why not? It's a really pretty crystal <laughs> thick ornament yeah. with my name on it. Um, so that's one of those things where you can kind of do it a couple different ways too. By the way, you could put the realtors uh, logo on it which they can do a write off on the whole order because it's considered merchandise for, uh, you know, for themselves. Um, or you could do for advertising. There you go. Uh, or you could have it do where literally you can do the text. Like Kyle had talked about last week with the, uh, variable text. And so literally it could be just, you know, the, the address established 2023 or 2022, something like that. Um, where you literally just hit change and it variable text, you go to the next one. That's my thought on it. Uh, and then here's the question that I saw way back in the beginning before we were even here. So okay. Scoots said, I have a 175 by 175 lens with a 30 watt fiber using cylinder correction on a 100 millimeter diameter stainless steel tumbler uh, with limited success. The outer mm -hmm. portion of the dyne are not the same color as the center. And there was some discussion on it. I think the discussion was pretty accurate, but um, basically people were saying, uh, the lens was probably too small for the 100 millimeter cup. What do you guys think? Uh, a big Depends issue, on the design, probably. Yeah. I, so something that I would look at too um, is that the tumblers are almost never cylindrical, ever proportionately cil cylindrical all the way around. They're usually yeah. kind of an, an ellipse. Friggin' taper. Um, yeah. They so not not even not even the taper, not even the taper this way. I mean, like looking at it oh, in yeah. a circle, like yeah. they're they're usually elliptical rather than a perfect circle, and that means that if you're, if you're at your lowest point here and you rotate it ninety degrees, you're now at the highest point here. There could be a millimeter or two difference, um, and the correct answer is a larger lens will help compensate for that because your depth of field is is wider, so you're going to have more consistent results within that deviation. Um, so that's certainly a, a way to go, uh, for a different reason than I think you guys were thinking, but that would, that would be probably the, the go to. Um, also, I would say that you might want to look at, um, using a, a higher frequency mark. You know, like take, take some more power out of the equation if you can. Uh, so whether you're raising the speed or manipulating the, the frequency in some way, uh, to reduce the impact of the laser on the tumbler, it might provide a more consistent result across different 
focal lengths, uh, which is essentially what you need in order to get this done. I can almost guarantee you that the, the problem that you're facing uh, is specifically the the elliptical shape of, of the, the cup rather than yeah. anything else. Make sure that it's level too. I, I know that sounds dumb, but you know, I so level it all the way around. He said a couple of things more and he actually just replied at the very, very bottom. So this is like literally at the very tippy top. He was like the fourth comment. Mm -hmm. um, so he said, uh, I've got a 220 that he uh, hasn't calibrated yet. So he's thinking that would help. And he said he thought about the 300. Uh, let's see what he said. I thought about the 300. I think that would spill off of the bed. How tough is something like that to calibrate? Um, it's doable. I mean, so you, you would do I it use in, a 300 with it. You're, you'd use black poster board. So it doesn't matter if it falls off your bed. It's more about the, the depth of focus that you get from it. That's the better thing you're looking for. on top of that, the, That's what I was gonna talk um, about. the core file uh, program also allows you to resize your testing box. You can actually pull that size down so that you can calibrate it easier so you're not measuring, you know, 150 millimeter lengths between boxes or something ridiculous like that. So you can actually resize that original test mark while you're doing your calibration down to something a little more reasonable calibrate and then it will take that into consideration when generating your core file which uh would make that you know much easier yep and a couple of things real too real quick to think about too especially watch the videos number one um the other thing is the 300 definitely like uh kyle was saying gives you the depth of field and that's actually going to do what alex talked about which is give you the less impact so when you defocus it kind of takes away that oomph from the settings because i actually have done some stainless steel cups inside um, and they turned out pretty nice. It was a hundred millimeter, uh, the, the hundred millimeter JDS cup, polar camel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I did it that way. And uh, there's something else I was going to say, crap, I'm a brain sport. I mean, but well, yeah, that was pretty much it. Yeah. Just remember the reason that we're going for the larger lens is because we want that larger depth of field. Like the that's, that, that's, that's the thing that we're really going for. That bigger spot size is going to distribute heat more evenly over a larger area, and which is not good when we're trying to do deep engraving and stuff, right? That's the opposite of what you want. But when we're doing something like coating removals, that's exactly what we want to do. Or even Z-marking. If we're Z-marking or you know, trying to get a black mark on stainless steel non-powder coated cups, having that heat spread out over a wider area is going to be way more along the lines of what we're looking for. So the larger and, lens you use, the better. And again, the, the the deeper the depth of field, the more consistent your settings are going to be as you turn the cup and deal with the elliptical shape of, of the tumbler. So Right. And that's um, actually what he just commented was the design itself came out, but the color variation. And that's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. The other thing to consider, too, whatever lens you're doing, and this is something I've forgotten when, I, when I've done some with different sizes. Um, remember, you're not focusing from the lens itself. You're focusing up to the actual mirrors. So you have to add like another like five to seven uh, millimeters according to Lightburn's notes. So basically kind of, just kind of focal stick. Yep. But up above the lens. Or what are you saying? Add five or like add? No, I'm saying don't that. Di so what you're saying is what what they are saying. The math for cylinder correction. I mean, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing. So I was just going to say the math for cylinder correction. When you actually open cylinder correction, it says what's the distance. Add like five to seven, and you'll start to see like literally you'll see your design. Not only will it change shape a little bit, but those outer issues you're having clear up too. Because that's literally what I do with these things all the time, like these little guys. Yep. So just saying, that's that's what I was trying to. Yeah, no, nope, exactly. Yeah, perfect. I I totally missed you saying that. So yeah, I you know you can measure that easy enough. That distance. yeah, that's what that's what yeah. I did. I had to take my stick and actually measure it out. So just yeah. saying, it's one thing I feel like a lot of people would forget or like overlook. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a really good tip. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, seventy-seven people watching, twenty-nine nice. likes. We're getting nice. better. Thirty, that. nice. Ooh, why is that maple? Yeah, yeah, look at that. That's pretty. That burns so nice too. Them. Like. That's like blonde. That blonde stuff burns so nice. How's it smelling yeah. over there right now? You getting the you getting the the scents and the smells. You know what it reminds me of? Hmm. It reminds me of the days I used to help build boats. Of course, Kyle helped build boats. Probably and in Boy Scouts. I'm, 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 no, it wasn't in Boy Scouts. That was in school. Um, years walking along the shore. I can't raising. quite tell what this is. Is this ash? You think? It looks pretty ashy. Put some lotion on it. See what happens. 
Yeah. Um, Emergencystop.net. Wayne Brooks says, Alex, you got me thinking about Pokemon lately. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm working on the light with my laser and 3D printing. That'd be cool. I'd love to see that. Um, Gretch Zeppelin says, pizza, yes, but won't cut through the pineapple. Interesting. <laughs> Ugh. What's wrong with so you? So you're Gretchen? telling me you like pineapple on pizza? Dude, you know what? I fucking love Hawaiian pizza. Oh no, $4,000. Yeah. yeah, JXRP, I talked to an HVAC specialist and he said he could set up a ventilation system for about four grand. Is that too much money? Should I look around a little? That um, depends. You could set up an HVAC unit for a lot less than that. But well, if you don't, is this an industrial have- warehouse or are we in my garage? That's, yeah, you know, that's, an, that's, that's a very important question, and we'll probably find the answer down at the bottom of the chat in like an yeah. hour and a half. But um, <laughs> <laughs> we're already at forty minutes. Um, oh shit! Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, we, we might go just a touch long today. Um, listen, man, the HVAC specialist is a specialist. He's going to do the job perfectly. Uh, he's probably going to do it really fast, and it's probably going to be really pro grade at that price point i would hope so you know so it's Licensed probably going to be better insured, than my my crappy little you know duct that goes out to my acrylic I, duct tape that's not true window. your duct has eyeballs and alex that's pro i, I listen, would <laughs> i would get a a, a very uh detailed specific list. a detailed quote yeah to see what exactly he's, he's going to be sourcing and putting in because the other thing too is you don't need insulated ducting. So an HVAC guy may be looking to do that for you. And that's not what you really need if you're doing ventilation for a laser. Or maybe you do. Maybe it's for air intake. And not well, that's kind exhaust. of the thing, right? Like, we don't really know what he so, needs. And also, I don't want to steer people away from having professionals do things like this either. We talk a yeah. lot about D- DIY on the channel. You know, like how we can do these things ourselves. For a lot of people, that's not the answer sometimes. Sometimes you can't or don't know how to do it or uh, you don't have the ability to do it and you have to bring in a professional. In which case, if, if that were the case for you, you know, I don't know what a good price would be for that because, again, like your, the, the footage you're covering is going to be a huge, uh, you know, consideration in, in that as well. It's expensive. It's a lot of money. We're thinking it's a lot of money because we've run long stretches of portable ducting across like, you know, dozens and dozens of feet with like a big centrifuge fan at the end and we yeah. call it a day. Uh, but it's it's not the best setup either. So it's what do you want? What are you willing to pay for? Um, I would at I the will. very least get some competing quotes at the very least. You know, like it doesn't hurt to to talk um, to a couple people. Great video just got posted by Jason Reif um, in the lounge and in Laser up. Everything Facebook yep. groups. Yep. Um, and his exhaust, I've actually seen it in person. It is insanely better. I mean, that's that's a professional grade. Like if someone said that cost four thousand dollars, I would absolutely believe it. By the way, that has uh, pneumatic um, solenoids that push in and uh, and pull out, so that like he knows which tubes are going where. It's got a huge centrifugal fan at the end, like for a kitchen grade centrifugal fan pulling, and it does eight lasers. So that one machine <clears throat> machine <clears throat> pulls for eight lasers, and he's got um, mechanized processes for cutting off air flows and stuff like that. So that what did, I, what did I just tell you guys, Matt, on the Laser Source podcast? He's like, <laughs> on emergency stop, he's like. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I'm busy me. explaining people. That. We're in a live setting so versus funny. a recorded setting. So funny. But at least um, I didn't do this. <laughs> love. Yeah. Uh, Laura Kyle says, I still can't believe you bit those Oreos. Oh, I'm, I did I'm, it. I'm saying you because I barely that I barely licked mine. It was horrible. I got, um, your I, got, I, got, I, got I got some more food items, Glenn. Don't worry. Yeah, I've literally scrolled through like Three percent of this chat, and we're at forty-five minutes, so we need to pick up the pace a little bit. Yeah, I got one for us. Here we go. Up, oh, wait, no, good. Here you go. I clicked one. Yep, J O three O two ninety-two. It's a birthday. That sounds like a birthday. Uh, 
I'm upgrading my little diode laser to possibly a Nova 35 80 watt or 100 watt. Is it worth the extra few thousand for the extra 20 watts? Um, Depends what you I, dude, I don't know. I mean, I, you could probably if buy you're cutting, a if you're cutting watt for less than a few thousand bucks. Um, just say, that's really expensive. It shouldn't be that much more expensive for 20 watts. That said, neither here nor there, short answers. Um, that said, are you cutting things thicker than an eighth inch? If so, get the 100 watt, uh, especially if you're cutting acrylic thicker than an eighth inch plywood you might get away with on the 80 watt it will be more or less clean the acrylic is tough to get through uh mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to do quarter inch acrylic half inch acrylic 100 watt laser 20 extra watts will go a yeah, very long man. way a because very long the, way speed, that. the speed that you can do it at too all right uh what's the one you had uh oh my question here we go yeah, let's go we gotta go 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 all right ah so lt google uh, in regards to fiber leaves, I want to engrave metal and polymer like PMAGs and pew frames. Could I get mm. away with a 20 watt or do I have to go with 30 watt to get good results? What do you think? Um, I, I would think I have a PMAG then. So the 20 watt's going to do probably better with the polymer stuff uh, because generally the issue with those is that you have too much power and you're just melting shit. Uh, so, you know, the 20 watt would be nice for that, but if you also want to engrave metal, uh, the thirty watt would be nice for that. So, um, you you can tune backwards I'd, for it. Yeah, it I would probably time. get the thirty if you don't have to. Um, it's going to be slower on the twenty watt, but it's it's off. usable. Uh, what was the EM Smart it was like twenty five? Yeah. I think that was pass. That, that was passable. Um, twenty's pretty low. Yeah, affordable. Twenty's pretty low. Um. I would get a 30 prefer. watt in the in the like 3500 range or something. So yeah. this was a 50 watt. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but yep. I mean that's easy. So that's a 50 watt, yep. and it looks nice. I had gray and I had tan. Yep. So just saying. Yep. Um, 20 is a little low. Uh, if you if that's what you can get, that's what you got. But um, well, I think the other part too is he said he wants to do metal. And that's where the, the polymer that's 20 yeah. watts great, but the metal, yeah. that 30, that extra 10 really is big. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Let's see. Here we go. Any way to script a test grid for EasyCAD and output to a binary EZD file? Found one for Lightburn, but the file looks like an XML or vector. There are some. You can actually find those files online. And I know there's one. There's somebody who sold one on Etsy. Like when I first started and hadn't even heard of LMA or you guys or anything, I was looking for test file stuff on Etsy, and I'd seen them there. Um, I, I know I, I, there's somewhere in our groups where I've seen it. What do you, guys, yeah. what do you think? Um, I, don't, I don't know. First of all, I don't know how to go about generating something like That's that. a lot of work. That's way over my head. Um, I know that EasyCAD supports scripting because... People use that for like the manufacturing and the industrial setting usage of these machines all the time. But I yeah. don't know what functions they cover and I've never really gotten into it. It's never really applied to me or the people that we generally try to help on the channel. So we just haven't spent a lot of time with it. Um, yeah. So it's out there, but possibly, we just. Yeah, it's like I want to believe, you know, where's Fox Mulder? <laughs> Clap your hands. All right. What is the dot? Si this sounds like a straight up Jeopardy question. Yeah. <laughs> TMB Farming says, what is the dot size of 70 watt CO2 with a two inch lens? I'm thinking of talking game. The answer to that is it depends. <laughs> yeah. I, Every, so range. here, here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. The dot size coming out of the tube is going to be different from one tube to the next. Yeah. So it's, there's, there's multi layers of factoring here. But um, you're probably going to be looking at like a um, maybe like a 120 to 130 DPI. So Ooh. whatever that equates to in, yeah, gotcha. uh, in dot size. Yeah. Okay. You'll have to work backwards from that. I can't math that right now. All right. Bloodwood. Next one. Ooh, Ooh nice. That's pretty fancy. Nice. Yep. That'd be a really great it, cake. It smells interesting. Not how I expected. <laughs> Very singularly. All right, sure so that. when I first are you, thought, are you at the bottom, Matt? Uh, no, I'm getting close though. 
Okay, I'm like in the middle still too. But go yeah, ahead. so I'm I'm a be- I'm below you. You so, are. So uh, when I first bought my Thunder Laser, I had a head crash. Found out it was a Z control under device setting. What the hell is this for? in light burn. It's your Z setting. Yeah. Um, it's really cool for cutting, by the way. Um, so basically, I can tell you, I cut whenever. Yeah, you're just destroying our ears. I hate you, Kyle. <laughs> but like. Um, sorry, I mean, wood. Uh, your, your wood is thunderous. Is wood. Your wood is thunderous. Um, so the Z setting is, is literally ooh, nice. uh, Z is your vertical, right? So if you've got Z control, whenever I cut, like uh, I actually, when I cut more than quarter inch stuff, I usually will actually do two cuts sometimes if it's something where I need to to have precision and not have because otherwise, what happens in in polymer or not in polymer? And acrylic is the light will actually start to kind of bend and you'll actually see um, a curve in your cut by the end of it. Um, so what you can do is have the first pass. It's at this Z value and then you can actually have it drop a little bit so that the focus pushes down into the material more. Um, so that's what the Z control is for. And so you can actually control the Z drop um, pretty, pretty well uh, in there. You just have to be really careful because exactly what you said if you have any piece of the material that shoots up, like if you're doing a cut um, and a piece of material is up, that head is just going to crash. So you have to be mindful of that kind of thing because you literally are dropping from the substrate down. You're bringing the focus down um, or you could be going up, which is going to completely muddle that cut badly. Uh, We've been getting a lot of super, what do you call them too? Gonna call those out. Super chats. Yeah, I see one from uh, the blonde fox up here. Twenty twenty dollars. Thank you for that. Yeah, we really Wayne Brooks it. just put ten dollars in. Quite... Laser of Love has four ninety nine. Imagine being it's... all the way down at the bottom of chat. I wish. Glenn. Hold on. Uh, pretty. Very dark. I love that. Yeah. I've had good. my fiber yeah. for about a month now and have only used it a few times. I went directly to using Lightburn. Would I benefit from loading up EasyCAD as well or just stick with Lightburn? Uh, if you haven't done them, do your lens corrections, which you can't do in Lightburn, uh, unless you did it the Lightburn way, the way they show it, manual corrections, which sucks. Uh, you know, I, core, I think Core Files better um, virtually every way. Uh, so if you haven't done that, at least do that. Don't throw out your EasyCAD installation, too. Uh, this isn't going to be a long answer, but um, people usually just delete the EasyCAD folder once they get Lightburn working even the tiniest little bit. Keep it. There's a bunch of defaults in there from the factory that may or may not be useful to you down the road. Uh, it's great for diagnostics. If you are doing something in Lightburn and it's not quite working, you can always load up EasyCAD and try to do the same thing and see if it works in EasyCAD, because if it does, you know the problem's in Lightburn and vice versa. Uh, so, you know, hang on to it. Um, and again, if you haven't done a core file, uh, go watch the video on doing core files and do your core files. Uh, they're, they're more accurate and they take less time. Uh, it's, it's the best of both worlds. You can uh, have your cake and eat it, too, on that. What's a little uh, wrapped ply up there, Kyle? What's, what's going on? Yeah. yeah? Uh, looks like eighth inch. Nice. Nice. I don't I don't remember exactly what you ordered, so. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's, uh, if it looks like 8th inch fly, then it's 8th inch fly. Um, Jason, says, do you have a video on setting up a ventilation system for my BE lasers? Uh, what's a BE laser? Do you know what that is? Do you know what he's referring to? Maybe a typo. Uh, yeah. I don't know. We don't have any ventilation videos, at either way. Uh, I know Kyle, Kyle and I have been talking about... It's, it's in the works. Yeah, it's, Kyle... It's in the Definitely uh, very close to doing that soon. You're going to hop in on that, Matt? Uh, I think so, because he and I were literally looking at the systems together, and I was like, okay, if we did this and we did that, if we punched through all, and like we spent, what well, was like an hour talking about that? It was one thirty when I went to bed. I remember that. And I was like, I have to sleep. And Kyle was like, don't be a bitch. And I was like, don't be mean to me, Kyle. And he yelled at me more. I definitely didn't call you that but okay that's exactly what happened there's Scott, everyone knows uh, says everyone knows as far as split size and overlap do you have a happy median for quicker runs for black annealing no uh there's no shortcuts for black <laughs> if you want to do black uh use a a small split size go literally line by line and you'll get juicy crispy beautiful black results black marks take time by the way uh, 
that, yes, that you can see from all angles because that's the big kicker between blacks in my right. opinion like yes. you can see a great looking black here but then you just tilt it 10 degrees and it's like silver right exactly um so that's laura, that's the thing good looking out don't forget to smash the like button guys uh when laura said that there were 64 people were at 83 ridiculous smash the like button the guys. biggest number i've seen is 88 Kyle's awesome. got his little sample card pack there. Uh, oh, wait, there's more. His wood is waning. Uh, yeah. Sample it back, guys. <laughs> Liper in question. Had Lipern up and running on my CO2 successfully. I upgraded my fiber to Lipern and added a device for each of my lenses. That's good. That's what you should be doing. Now my CO2 always seems to keep defaulting to my fiber settings. Um, so they will... They will stick if you are okay uh, yeah, you need to load the library you need to load the library which um i will show you very quickly here uh continue on in in the meantime and i'm just going to do this demo uh okay. i'll, uh, I'll, couple I'll, of I'll put in when i'm ready all right a couple of things that i saw um, apparently Frank Taylor uh was said that there was some really interesting uh the president of aon Made some interesting announcements tonight, so that's cool. Good to know. Uh, that was on a video. I can't even find it. I literally just had it. I think it was that dude with the laser. Um, let's see. Will settings be the same for... Oh, yeah, here you go. So, will settings be the same for engraving black on flat stainless steel as for a tumbler and the rotary? Kyle, thoughts? Um, if you're using... If you're using that tumbler on a rotary, then yes, because the the plane of engraving isn't changing. All right. Yeah, I'm and then, well, the other thing is too, he's talking about flat stainless steel. I think is what he's saying too. But yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. All right. Yeah. Oh if, yeah. If, I, I if, you're saying. if you're doing a tumbler on a rotary and you're engraving across it, as long as your split is staying at the top of the the the, the tumbler, it's going to be very close. Right. Yeah. To the settings you that go. you would be doing on flat. Uh. If you're on, whoop, meant to do me. Come on. Well, hello. Move me up there. There we go. Um, <laughs> Freudian slip. We know what you did. I meant to do me. Would you do me? Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, I gotta Lightburn, go. If you're <laughs> uh, emergencystop.net. Here is Lightburn. <laughs> if you're listening, sorry, you can watch this on YouTube. Um, here's my library. This is for my 70 watt Ranger. Okay. If I come over to the laser tab down here, and I drop down again, this is going to be super quick. And I click my, uh, you know, my M7, right? My 80 watt JPT M7 right here. And we go over to the library page. You can now see it says 80 watt JPT M7. So what I did to set this up is you know, once you have the right library in, you do that by clicking load, you load the library in. Um, once you have the right library in, hit save as and save it again with the name of the corresponding laser. Here you can see my Lightburn Libraries folder on my computer. And I have literally a library for every single lens uh, and every single laser. And I keep them all separate. And I have them saved as in their own folder. And once you do that uh, and, and you, you load that library in, this is the library that's going to load up every single time that you use this device. That is on, like, I, I don't remember when they added it so that it did that. I think it was post 1.0. So if you haven't updated Lightburn in a while, you may want to update but you'll yeah. see if I switch back to the Ranger now, which I did the same exact process for, it'll now say 70 watt Ranger because it, it knows and it links that library to that device. And we can test that one more time. Uh, so we'll come down to the 30 watt coherent. Here's my CO2 Galvo and we come to the library and of course it's not working for me. So we'll, let's try to fix this. So this is pulling up the 80 watt JPT M7. Do I have a library for this yet? Let's see. Uh, maybe I don't, but, um, that's okay. We can just, we'll do the ohm tech library as an example, just to show you that it works. So I'm going to hit open. So now this says 100 watt ohm tech, right? This isn't the right library for this laser. That's not important. What's important is that it's going to stick. So we'll come back to the 80 watt JPT M7, 80 watt JPT M7. Then we'll come back to the laser tab here. Okay. We're going to do the Ranger three. We're going to come to library, Ranger 3, and then I'm going to come back to the laser tab one more time. We're going to check this 30-watt coherent that we just clicked. I think it was this one. Library, and now it says 100-watt ohm tech. So it's stuck. So it does remember those, even when you close light burn and reopen them. Uh, so that's yeah. all you have to do in order to get it to stick. Uh, just make sure that you have individual libraries saved, 
And I, again, I like to keep them labeled and in one folder, it makes them really easy to keep track of. And I make sure that the library name matches my device name exactly yep. inside Lightburn so that I know that I'm using the, the correct library. So that's kind of how yep. I go about yep. fixing that. Uh, I, I blew through that. I'm sorry. We're really short on time today. Uh, but hopefully that was uh, helpful for you. And I was going to say, always double check before you send it, man. Because I've done that so many times and it's like, well, there went that blank. Shit. <laughs> so, yep. All right. Let's see. Uh, we're, we're making our way down, guys. We're doing good. Um, so let's see. I don't know where we are because I was playing with my I got it. I got it. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> all right. Could Matt talk real quick about the boss in Pyburn? If he has one at both version 4S and haven't plugged him in yet. Um, both version 4S. I don't have Pyburn. I actually have Rotoboss. Um, I've only got one Rotoboss for the CO2 back here. And then I bought a low roller for this. Um, but I will say Pretty it works great. I'm, I'm, I'm I know Pyburn, Alex, you've got a Pyburn unit. Have you I played did. with it yet? I have not touched my rotaries yet, unfortunately, but okay. I will. Yeah. So that's something. But um, I don't have a boss. I can tell you if you've got uh, a boss or a Pyburn, they come with videos and they come with QR codes that you can scan that literally teach you how to walk your way through it. Um, do we have rotary videos uh, we, for the CO2? We have like one. I think that's going to be something that Kyle's going to be getting to. Uh, I'm going to be getting to it in the crash course, but mm -hmm. if you look back, way back on the channel, uh, there are some older video slash live streams that do encompass uh, rotary work yep. in the yep. OG office. Yep. That's I cool. literally do a shit ton of rotary work, so it's, I mean, I can talk about that later because we're running out. Um, Ooh, I look forward Sawyer. to that in the, the light room for uh, gantry crash course. Heck yeah, man. Um, so Eric Sawyer gave us a dollar, two dollar uh, super. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, um, man. Let's see. Uh, Jake asked what kind of laser he should buy. Um, the, I know we've got videos. The buying guide is down below, right? So uh, what what are you trying to laser to? That's that going to depend on what you're going to get. The one that was so, asking about the CO2s earlier, the 80 watt versus the 10 or 100 watt uh, CO2. Um, 15K. I know the boss behind me right now for 150, it's got a 155 watt that um, is pretty killer. And that's for the, uh, you can get that on the 2436 or you can get it on the 4855. Um, and I like my machine. Just saying. Um, I don't recommend my machine. There's a reason why I call it the blue poo. Are we sure that he are we sure that he wants a CO2? Did he clarify that somewhere? I thought he had asked about 80 watt or 100 watt because we oh, talked okay. about cutting. Remember? Oh, right. 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 We talked right. about cutting. Yep. So that's my thought. Um, yep. yep. But what do you think for a, what if he was talking about a fiber? What do you think? 80 to 100 watt? Or, I mean, well, no, if he's got 15K, what should he get? No, I think you're right. It's a, I, I recall that conversation. Okay. Um, and I've been really impressed with, and you can keep an eye on the channel too. Um, th so, so I know that Matt's boss lasers are really nice. Uh, I know that the Eon lasers are really nice. I have one. Uh, it's been beautiful. It's worked flawlessly. Uh, and then I also can speak to the light object lasers uh, as well, which is something that I think you should take a close look at when you're looking at higher end lasers because they're really competitive uh they're much less known and i don't think that the markup is quite as high on them so you can usually get a really good deal on them marco's a genius uh we did a facility tour where we went out there uh not too long ago and in a couple weeks here i'm going back out and uh michael mullins and i from laser engraving 911 are literally like madhouse playing with everything that they have in their in their warehouse it's gonna be really really fun uh, he just All basically the came out. He was like, "I'll fly you out. I literally just want you to just touch everything." And I was like, "Okay, you know, like free content." So, um, yeah. so no, you know, we'll we'll be checking those out really, really soon too. Yeah. All right. So Freight TV said, "I'm extremely new to the field of fiber laser engraving, but have been doing it for an industrial company for four months now. I work with all types of metal. Your videos are great. Thanks, Freight. Appreciate that. Uh, did then, we get to Did we get to this one from Wayne Brooks yet? We all know." Oh, well. The beginner air assist for diode. What if you want to add a second one in line with your existing air assist? Would it increase mm -hmm. your laser efficiency? I I probably wouldn't do an in line. That sounds like a pain in the butt. Just up it. Work. Just replace it. Um, you can a you lot can of use a do. bypass valve, so you can have two different levels of air assist on the same line. Yeah, from they, the same source, and when when the you can trigger it so that it 
either turns on through the controller, if you're doing diode or CO2, depending on how it's set up, or you can um, trigger it with a flip switch. I was also so you can have like an engraving and a cutting pressure. One of the CO2 like fish tank bumps, you know, with the fins. Yep. Um, more than you'll ever need, more pressure than you'll ever need on a diode laser. And most of the diode laser air assist kits usually come with a little like just flow valve. It's very, very simple flow valve with like a little screw that you can change the air pressure with. And I basically min max that. So I'd min it for, for marking and then max it for cutting. And it it was like perfect. Uh, so that mm-hmm. is like a really simple setup that could uh, knock that out for you. OK, Matt, your turn. We're good. We got to right. take turns. I'm still way back in the past. Yeah, right? you're good. Um, so I was going to do, I see three supers real quick that I want to just tag. So Blonde Fox, I know we had already said that. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Fox. Laser of Love Creations, Ms. Laura. Thank, thank you, you Laura. so much. They got a you, super Laura. sticker. Wayne Brooks himself, the guy you just answered his question, a beast. gave us 10 bucks. Thank you very much, Wayne. Thank Appreciate you. it. And then LT Google had said, thanks for answering the previous questions. Can you explain the difference between Lightburn and EasyCAD? That's a big one that we have video, a lot of videos for. Yeah. Um, and then I said, I saw one of your videos about going with EasyCAD 2 and Lightburn instead of EasyCAD 3. So he's already mentioned that one. Yeah. Um, and that's the downgrade. Uh, and actually, I know Miranda put a link into the chat for that video, too. Yeah. yeah. And the appeal there is EasyCAD 2 and Lightburn boards are the same boards. That That's what makes them compatible. EasyCAD 3 is a different animal entirely. Right. It's a, literally for a different machine, controller for a different machine, like a 3D. And Lightburn just doesn't support it yet. Um, Asterisk over yet. They may never support it. We don't know. Uh, but in general, Lightburn, the software, is much more user-friendly uh, and, and human-friendly than EasyCAD. EasyCAD, again, is for industrial kind of commercial setups where... You're doing like a thousand million things on like an assembly line. It's really good for that. Uh, but when you're constantly changing parameters, it's just not really designed to be interactive. And we're doing with a lot of design work too. That, that often. So uh, Lightburn is much more friendly for people that are constantly changing parameters and things like that. Um, do you guys know what this one means? Uh, Kowalski does. says so 750, 60 or 412. 90. My guess would be that's the settings. He's the one that asked about the uh, the different settings from the CO2. Oh, you said it was for the 30 watt fiber, not the CO2, the 30 watt fiber for the cup colors. Oh, okay. So that, okay. I bet you that that sounds like for those settings to be that different, that sounds speed like colors. Yeah, yeah, that's speed and power, and that sounds like colors for sure. Yeah, yeah. To go um, from 60 to 90 and 760. So again, then. I would, you know, you're going to have to, it depends on like the color tumblers you're working with and stuff like that. I think the most recent one that I used was like the 750 60. So I would start more around there if you're looking for a starting place between those two. Uh, but I'm just guessing. What frequency? Um, like 40, not 45. Uh, yeah, I think it was like. It was low. I think it was like. It wouldn't be any lower than 45. Yeah, I there. thought 45 was the one that kind of was the special, maybe. Yeah, but anywho, yep, uh, here's a lie from Miranda. I've never heard Kyle swear. <laughs> <laughs> he, just called him, .net. he literally just in the private comments on the side said, Matt, you're an asshole. So if you guys, here's just a little taste for you really quick before we continue on with the questions. We're at an hour and eight. We're doing pretty well here. Um, well, at the bottom. If you want to hear Kyle tell a story about <laughs> providing computer customer support for a online streaming sex worker, <laughs> head over to emergencystop.net. And that was just at his real day job. That was the real <laughs> that day was job. A real day job. This is the real deal right there. If yeah. you'd also like to hear about fallacious key deer, head on over. Um, David's asking, any way to form a database for tumblers? Mm. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's, Again, it'd be like the ballpark figures. Be the ballpark figures. Um, but, you know, I, I think like a settings database of like user generated settings would be something really nice. We have the Laser Everything community project database that already exists uh, on the website where anybody can upload user projects for other people to use. But having something where there's just like a few fields and people can just type stuff in and submit yeah. it. That would be cool. I'll talk to him I, about that. Honestly, like that's that a up. cool thing because I just don't buy all the colors. Like I would love to help add to that, but I have like maybe six colors that I buy a lot of. And then the other stuff I'm just going to, I do with the CO2 on the rotary. Cause I know I'm guaranteed going to knock it out. 
just also, takes longer. I'm reading this in Samuel L. Jackson's voice. Look at the big brain on Brad. Pulp Fiction. That was that was your that was your Samuel L. Jackson. I, you know, I I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm not a freaking fifty year old black man. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> do, 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 I got one. We got a. That's what she said. We got a Miranda yelling at you for stuff. Here's one. Okay, Kyle yeah. is the Mister Rogers of the group. <laughs> Someone doesn't Where? listen to emergency stop. I don't nope. know. Nope. All right, let's see. Can't really blame oh, her. He's here not go. Um, Frank, Frank. Oh, Frank. Oh, oh, hey, I think I caught up. Is this where you picked up? Yes. All right, done. Go. Sweet. All right, I'm coming to the future. All right, here we go. So Frank Taylor said that tonight uh, they mentioned on-demand metal cutting for Aeon owners. I'm not sure what that means, but it sounds like you can order stuff from them right there. Uh, cool. Yeah, f- fiber cutting. Nice. Like Like big cutters, probably. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, Wayne Brooks, dollar ninety nine super sticker. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Wayne. Appreciate it. Uh, do you have parameters for a fifty watt fiber laser? So many. Yes. Well, yes, we so do. Many. Uh, we have for for every common lens too. So just like we said at the beginning of the stream, um, you know, first of all, the settings are free. We don't like. I don't hide settings from people. We don't refuse to help people with settings. If you need help with settings, you can always reach out in any of our free communities, uh, and everybody will jump to help you. It's one of the best things about Laser Everything in general, but if you would like a nice, organized list uh, that's kind of been curated and tested and worked on over time uh, for any wattage laser and any lens combination, uh, as, as at least as far as fibers go, and we have a uh, fairly successful CO2 gantry and CO2 Galva library as well. You can find those by supporting the channel over at the Laser Master Academy, masters.lasereverything.net. It's the number one way to support the channel. Uh, you get a bunch of bonus goodies for signing up. So definitely please go check that out. All right, here we go. Beam it up, Laserworks. Stuck at work, but wanted to say thanks and keep doing what you do. Five That's Anthony, right? Sugar. That okay, is Anthony. Anthony. Thank you, bro. Uh, by the way, thank, thank you, you for everything you do, man. Like on Discord, Anthony I beats know. me to like a- every single thing. Literally a hoss. Yeah. So on the LMA too, Anthony's one of those people on the LMA that's just always there, and he's always at him and Michael. Shout out to Michael Dias too uh, for for always helping to take care of the members. Kyle and I just literally there are so many of you. We just broke twenty eight hundred members on the LMA. Uh, speaking of the LMA, and Kyle and I try to answer every question. It's just. We just can't do it uh, by ourselves. And we have uh, so many of the last five days I worked. I spent eight hours every day working on LMA. Yeah. And literally, I'll get a stuff. message. I get messages from <laughs> Kyle when he notices I'm online. It'll be like one thirty in the morning. He's like, you out there? I'm answering questions. I need some help. I need breaks. I need to breathe. I need to talk because he just doesn't stop, man. It's and uh, Anthony and Michael have gone like far and out of their way to kind of help lighten that load as much as they can. And we're really grateful for it. And then, of course, when Anthony's done doing that, he comes in here and throws money at us. Uh, so thanks again. Uh, we, we appreciate that, bro. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. One more. Brandon says, I have a client that wants engraved bricks with black lettering in the engraving. Each brick is for a customer of theirs. They're going to be outside. Recommendations? I know there's they a, make bricks specifically yep. for that. That's what I was going to say. Laser <laughs> brick laser? Laser brick? Yeah. Uh, it, um, uh, by the way, they they burn black is what it is. If you're not yeah. if you're if you're not if you don't find that and you don't want to use that, um, go as as deep as you possibly can with the fifty watt. Like just chunk it out. Like just crazy high power, slow speed, blow it out. Uh, masked with black gaff tape specifically. Don't use like duct tape because it's got PVC in it. It's fucking stupid. Uh, black gaffing tape. Okay. You go as deep as you can, backfill it with enamel. Enamel paint hardens to like mm-hmm. a rock and it's super weather resistant. Uh, so you'd let, you'd let that cure for like two or three days after setting it in. The gaffer's tape will peel right up off the brick, literally super easy without any effort. And you'll have like a nice black enamel backfill if you can't find the laser brick. Laser brick would be super nice. If you can do that, do They're that. a little more but expensive. If you can't, that's a very good alternative. Uh, enamel works really well. By the way, I was going to say two things to add to that. Um, I highly suggest a fan of some kind blowing toward your exhaust that should be really working. Like yeah. 
because that you laser, blow the, the clay or whatever the brick is made out of out of the hole and away from the brick so that it's got a clear path for the laser to hit. So as best you can, or if you can't do that, at least clear out the, the debris of the, like the stuff from the air, because that's going to affect the beam. And you might see like pitting, I guess would be the best way to explain it. Cause yeah. I, I found that out the hard way. Um, luckily it was just on something I was playing with for my back garden. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see. Is there a disadvantage? We're almost done, by the way. Is there a disadvantage using air assist while engraving? I just leave mine on. Um, I can tell you, I leave mine on always to a small degree. Like, so I actually change my air pressure at the valve um, yeah. down. So, like, when I was just doing those boards there, I keep it at about 15 because there's a lot, like, it's heavier uh, oils that can come out too when you're engraving. The olive wood has a lot of oils in it. Um, and then uh, when I do. I know there's a lot of people who do no air assist whenever they're engraving um, acrylic, but I leave mine on at like eight PSI. I mean, just literally just because I do really big engraves um, like the one behind me on my sign, like that guy, that thing was like 16 inches around. Um, that's what she said. Uh, and um, it, there's just a lot coming off of it. Right. Yep. So I just kept it because by the end of it, that burn was crazy. And so. if you don't have like a crazy air compressor, like we both have nice air compressor setups, but I also have like the ohm tech where I'm just, it's the fish tank pump, you know, and there's no, there's no gauges or valves or anything on that. Uh, that one, I just, I totally leave that on. And I think I can whatever. tell you, I, I clean my lens or well, I shouldn't say I clean it less, but when I do clean my lenses, there is far less issues that I've seen. Like, I've had the same lens for quite a while. And any, just because I, any deficit to the material for leaving the air assist on pales in comparison to the deficit, uh, to the yeah, lens a good way to for, say it. for keeping it off. So what yeah. a smart way to say that too. Way to go. All right. Uh, let's see. Thanks for you guys. I appreciate it. Beaming of plays works. Thanks for, uh, Oh yeah. See, there you go. Thanks for stopping by last night. Let's see. Um, I'd search laser. Oh, here we go. Matt is on bottom now. Thanks, Eric. Matt's always <laughs> on the bottom. Wayne Brooks dishing it out again. Yep, I know. Look at this. Thank hey, you, man. Wayne. Thanks a shot at me, and then here's three bucks. <laughs> Clean yourself off. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm actually working on a new air assist setup, which can increase or decrease depending on what I'm working on, but I would like to sell it one day. When you're ready, make sure you check out the Laser Everything Marketplace. Uh, if you watch any of our streams that we've done about it, in the past and there are a handful at this point we've links to sign up as a vendor and you can actually like sell laser stuff to your fellow laser engravers uh so go watch one of those episodes if you haven't uh sargon's asking do you have an affiliate link for lightburn lightburn doesn't have any kind of affiliate program and we don't really care oh. it's good enough it's awesome. uh that it, they just give them money they deserve it uh just just buy it um but yeah they don't they don't have an affiliate program or anything like that uh it's just the best so uh, by the way you know, they work really hard on it I know I was going to say Jason did a really cool interview with Alicia and May on Monday. So if you guys didn't see it, um, that was really fun to watch. He talked about what he did before and how he got into everything. And it's just a smart, smart dude, man. It's crazy speaking, smart. Speaking of smart, uh, Laura says, I'm not going there to emergency stop. Checked out some of the titles <laughs> of the episodes. And thought it was, that's not the glottal. Uh, that's good. I'm glad that the episode titles are doing their job. By the now. way, I respect literally, you for it. Literally, there are like three of those videos, or not videos, three of those uh, episodes that start off with, <laughs> why are you here? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we yeah. asked you up front. Uh, in fact, in our most recent <laughs> Patreon supporter bonus episode, I, I just straight up said, fuck you. I was like, why would you even pay money? Kyle, for actually, it was Kyle that said it. You can pay to hear Kyle. No, Gross. no. Yeah. Uh, well, I did say it at the end, I guess. <laughs> you did. You did. Um, See? Projecto 84 AE. Another crazy name. Look at that picture, too. What's going on over there? That's uh, something from Hogwarts. Is it? No, I'm is just saying. <laughs> but yet, though, I uh, I do, do you use SVG files normally in EasyCAD? You can, I, I think, right? You can use SVGs uh, can. Yes. fairly, fairly I, easily. I've always found the of, AI V8s work best, but... I kind of prefer AI files if I ever have to go backwards to EasyCAD. Yeah. Um, in Which your... Wiper oh. exports nicely. Right. Uh, in your testing of Lightburn, are you testing for multiple motors for rotary and Z-axis? Uh, no. 
Uh, I don't think we do, I guess, but we uh, you cannot yet because it doesn't support additional accesses outside of the rotary axis. So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at least not as of yet. Yeah. Jennifer says, while I'm waiting to save up for a fiber laser, I bought an Orchur Laser Master 3. Ooh, I'm having fun. a blast with it. I still need to... Mine's literally sitting right there, uh, and I, I have not chewed into that yet, but I'm really looking forward to playing with it because I really like uh, Orchur stuff. So um, we have that. Uh, Eric Pina says, I have an OMTEC 30-watt laser on the, uh, on its way. I've seen your rotary is the Chuck style and not the spring-loaded one. Have you used it for rings and jewelry? Yeah, we have a couple different episodes where we talk about that. Uh, the light burn for Galvo Crash Course, I believe, has a uh, pretty, pretty dope ring video. I think that's what we did it on. Oh, that uh, was a fun one. Yeah, this is a good episode. I believe so. Uh, and the really pretty. Is, that's one of the ones where like the process is more or less the same in EasyCAD as well. So whether you choose to. Uh, use Lightburn or not, that video, I would make the argument, is relevant to you. So make sure you check that one out. Uh, Freight says, so all I need to do is sign up for the monthly subscription, and the parameters are one of the perks. Does this include fiber lasers as well? Absolutely, it includes fiber lasers. And yet, again, all of those settings are on the they're on the channel, and the fiber laser converter, which is developed by David Christian, uh, Shark, on our communities, uh, is also free. So you can just watch a video find one of the settings and then run it through David's converter and, and, and you'd have the settings. But if so you'd rather time saved, if you'd rather, if you want to support the that, channel and, and get, get it the easy way, you get a nice yeah. list. Kyle spent a lot of time pre converting all of the libraries for literally every wattage and lens combination that you can possibly have. So you don't even need to run the converter these days. Uh, I'm also working on an update days. for that. Yeah. Um, so it's it's easier it's just like a nice like here you go thanks for supporting the channel it's not updated often anymore because it's fairly complete uh but when we do find new settings here and there we we try to toss them in so um it's not like you're paying to have it updated monthly you're paying to support the channel and it's a it's a nice little bonus but uh yeah it's it's there so if you want to check that out and you want to make sure that we can keep doing what we love to do uh again you can find that over at masters.lasereverything.net um are you still scrolling, Matt? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're going uh, along. You're killing it. Parmashad, gentlemen, have you had any experience with the new JCZ cards not being compatible with Lightburn? I just purchased a 50-watt laser and Lightburn cannot see it. Lightburn is not compatible with EasyCAD 3 cards uh, or anything beyond that. I don't know of anything newer, but there might be something that has hit the market lately. I, um, I, think, the, I think the newest things that they're putting out, like the all-in-one units, are... are basically an easy cad three card with a different software pack okay, so great. either way that's not going to work just yeah you need an easy cad two board uh lightburn does not support the easy cad three like infrastructure and architecture uh and, and like their chipset yet so if you if you want to use lightburn now you'll have to downgrade it's very easy and again we published a video on that it's called the easy cad three downgrade guide the light, uh, the EasyCAD two boards are inexpensive and easy to get, uh, and you can check that out. We talk about the pros and cons, and I literally walk step through step. There's a little bit of soldering, not a lot, and it's very simple soldering, just wires to connectors. Uh, pretty straightforward, so check that out. All right. Brandon Lean, awesome. Thank you, everyone. This channel has helped us to get where we are. I love to hear that. And Matt, it sounds like you have something in the chamber. Three, and then I think we'll be done at one and a half hours. So here All we go. Right. Ready? Yep. So Gordon Williams said, fiber laser engraving pins with two lines of text, no rotary attachment, should work just fine with a 110 by 110 lens, right? Yeah, I did it. I, I have an extra on hand just in case, but oh, I've, yeah. do- I've definitely done that before. Um, I actually have some. They might not be like gigantic. You know, it's going to be like a, a fairly small mark, but yeah, you can totally do it. Yeah, I've got one right here. Like, yeah. I know you can't see it, but literally that's two I lines right see there. see that a little bit, yeah. Yep. Well, I, I, yeah. the, I, I threw it up big. I threw it up big. Oh, oh, that's a, that's, these are my fuck ups that I keep here. Uh, but I just, all I had to do is turn the pin. I messed up where I set this pin, so I needed to turn it just a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, very easily it says uh, stolen from ELC Creations and I have my phone number on it. It's just so. the tiniest project mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally doable. Totally doable. Uh, all right, so that was one of them. Yep. Oh, you're stealing. Who's going? Go. And all I've oh. got. Uh, sorry, it that is. was just a regular no, comment. I pre- it is way cheaper. That's yeah. what I was going to actually click on too, though. Oh, okay. was how at, like that was one of them. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. Kyle, did you click that one? I did. No. Oh but yeah. It's, for for what you get, it you're absolutely dude. getting the tool of the century for the deal of the century mm-hmm. when it and comes down to it. For the price, and like that's what I wanted to focus on. Though you got all three light burn products, so that's for uh, fiber, for diode, and for for gantry, for Galvo, and for diode. It's cheaper than what you would pay, I think, for RD Works when you pay for that. And so RD Works like, is free. No, like not RD Works. Is it Krell? Krell Draw. Yes. That's the one. I can't. RD is what came with that thing when I first got it. Um, yep. And that was the third one. Yeah. Nice. Hey, dude. Uh, so Wayne Brooks, diehard podcast fan, Apple and Spotify, my number one favorite in my list. I listen every day. And on repeat, you guys are a godsend, and I would not be where I am without the community. Bro, thank you so much. I thank really, you, Ann. really appreciate to hearing that. Um, if you haven't already, I would like to highly encourage you to rate and review the podcast on those platforms. Uh, it makes a huge difference, and we really actually don't have that many reviews, um, especially on Apple, on Apple Podcasts, because so many... Uh, other podcast services pull their reviews from Apple. So they're just basically recycling <laughs> Apple's reviews. Uh, it makes a really, really big difference for us. So uh, five star rating always goes a super long way. If you want to leave a, a little comment, um, you know, you as Matt well, as, hot. it's always nice to, yeah. Uh, Matt Botterford is hot. That's sure. Uh, that would, that would work <laughs> great. Um, so yeah. So thank you so much, <laughs> Wayne. Uh, really appreciate that. And uh, Keith, I showed up late tonight, but as always, I really appreciate how you guys help us all. Learning so much from you all every day. Uh, we're here to help. Uh, Blonde Fox is out. Another great show. Got to put the kids to bed. See you next week. I do too. So I think that means it's time to close out the show. Uh, we're at an hour and 26 minutes. Uh, our longest episode in a long time. We went pretty long with May, but I think a we're a little longer questions. today. A lot of excellent questions. A lot of excellent questions. And uh, let's see, if you got value out of this episode of the Laser Source Podcast, and you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know that the content is good. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time we go live. We just talked about this a lot, but if you want to support the channel and make sure that we can continue doing the things that we do here, uh, we do a lot of different things here, uh, you can find out how to do that over at Master's dot laser everything dot net uh the laser master academy is the best way to support the channel you get a bunch of goodies for signing up so please go check that out um upcoming stuff uh i have like 50 things in my edit folder right now that i'm not going to get into because it'll just extend the podcast an extra 15 minutes but we have a lot of stuff coming um so keep an eye on the channel guys seriously like there's, there's, there's always new stuff coming out and uh, I'm going to I'm going to Light Object really soon, so I'm definitely going to shoot some like vlog kind of like footage while I'm out there, and I'll be uploading that like each night, and then like the big stuff I'll edit when I get home. But that'll be coming soon, so that'll be cool too. Uh, Marketplace is almost done. Go buy some merch. Uh, what did we just add? We just added uh, uh, written reviews uh, are coming yes. to the website. If you haven't already checked them out. Uh, so if you go to the website under the like buying guide tab, shop tab or whatever, uh, you'll see like a reviews thing. Uh, Amanda worked really hard to add that for us. And for our video reviews, we're just kind of adding the scripts. Uh, and then we're going to do extra bonus written reviews for things we literally just don't have time to do videos for. Because doing those feature length video reviews for everything takes a really, really, really long time. Uh, and we get a lot of stuff that comes through here that we just has just been sitting and collecting dust that that we haven't had time to just do a video for that stuff will get a written review. So um, all of the reviews, video and not, will be featured in that tab on the website. So make sure you check that out, too. Uh, that's a that's a brand really new thing. Cool graphics, by the way, on it. Really over neat. there. It's pretty neat, right? Yeah, it's like a cool little WordPress plugin. It was uh, it was it was nice. Uh, and Amanda did a good job setting it up. So thanks, Amanda. I think that's all I've got. You guys got anything else before we take off today? No. Beautiful. Y'all are perfect. Y'all are perfect. You're beautiful. Um, that's all I've got, guys. Can you do it in your um, Samuel L. Jackson voice? That, that's how we should end it tonight. You're beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> and we will see you in the next one. <laughs>